This lesson is to teach you about the proper and safe use of a bandsaw. Bandsaws come in all kinds of sizes like this large one here or this little one over here. But whatever the size of the bandsaw, whether it's a new or an older bandsaw, they all work on pretty much the same principles. The basic function of a bandsaw is that there are two large wheels in the bandsaw that, can, that run the blade. There's the blade is a continuous band that goes around these two wheels, uh, cutting downward uh, here at the, at the table. That's where the term bandsaw comes from. It's this continuous band for a blade. So on this small saw here, you can see the upper and lower wheels. And on this large bandsaw over here, it's much the same principle, just on a larger scale. The blade on a bandsaw runs between two sets of guides that help guide and stabilize the blade as it's running. There's one set of guides that's down underneath the table, and generally you won't see or, or, uh, or adjust those. And then there's a second set of guides up here above the blade that you need to be more aware of. The first thing to be aware of is that this set of guides, uh, sometimes they're rollers or sometimes they're just sort of friction blocks. These guides on the top, you can actually raise or lower depending on the object that you're cutting. If you're cutting a fairly thin board, then you want these rollers and these guides to be down low so that this guard protects your hands from possible contact with the blade. So right now I have it down pretty low. If you're cutting something thicker, maybe you're slicing up a, uh, a log or just some, some much thicker piece of wood or taller piece of wood, then you'll need to raise this, lower, this upper guide up in order to provide enough room on the blade for your piece of wood. So on this bandsaw, we have this wheel here that as, you, as I turn this wheel, you'll see it's raising this guide up uh, so that more and more of the blade is exposed. So for a thicker piece, that's what we want. This will go up quite, quite high. So with this bandsaw, you can actually um, cut a pretty, a pretty tall piece. Some larger bandsaws tend to have this sort of thing where there's a wheel that raises and lowers the guide. Uh, our smaller bands on others, there's just a lock and you raise and lower the guard manually and then lock the guard in place at the height that you want. Obviously, you want to be doing this when the bandsaw is off. You don't want to be reaching in to make adjustments like this while the blade's running. So imagine we're going to cut a board something like this, uh, which is a three quarter inch thick piece of wood. We don't need a lot of blade exposed. In fact, we don't want all this blade exposed because it just creates a greater hazard for us uh, that where we might accidentally come in contact with the blade. So what we will do in this case is we will lower the guard down. And the, uh, the guideline is that you want the, the blade, you want about an inch of clearance between the top of your board the top edge, whatever you're, whatever, uh, whatever you're cutting, you want about an inch of space between the top of that and the bottom of the guides. So you want a little bit of gap there so the board doesn't hit the, the guides at all, but most of the blade is covered for, for safety. So here I've got, as you can see, I've got about an inch here between my board and the guards, the, the blade guides. Most of these have some way of locking this guide in place this one, it's a turn knob on the back of the bandsaw. You can't see it in the camera right now, but I just turned that down snug so that this is locked in place and doesn't, doesn't move. Now I'm ready to do my cut. Now that I have my, my guide with the blade guard adjusted to the proper height, now I'm ready to start setting up for my cut. On the bandsaw, bandsaws are relatively safe tools compared to some of the other kinds of saws we're using, but they still, like any power tool, they have their risks and you need to respect them. As I mentioned in the video about the compound miter saw, saws, uh, power equipment have control surfaces that help guide your piece of work as you're making the cut. On the bandsaw, the principal control surface is the table itself, this cast iron surface that you will rest the board against as you make the cut on the bandsaw. The second control surface that a bandsaw has is this fence, which you'll see here. Uh, the, the fence you may or may not use, it depends on the kind of cut you're making. If you're making a cut that's nice and straight, then generally you're gonna be using the fence in order to help guide the board for the cut to the, to the proper width. You just set the distance between the fence and the blade to the width of the cut that you want to make. However, if you're making a different kind of cut, uh, perhaps a, 
cut that involves curves, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that later, then you might want to move the fence out of the way or remove it from the machine completely to give yourself plenty of space to, uh, to move the board around. So the key things to understand about the, using the bandsaw safely are this. First of all, as I mentioned earlier, the blade comes around on these wheels and the teeth point down as the blade moves down through the cut. So that means those teeth are pushing the board down onto the surface. And that's good. We want the board to be down on the surface. But one thing you just want to be aware of is you don't want to accidentally get a finger or a couple of fingertips underneath this board as you start to make your cut. Because when you do that, that blade will push down on the board with quite a considerable force and could give you a nasty pinch. So you want to make sure everything's out from underneath the board. The board should be sitting flat on the table. The second thing I already mentioned, and that is you want to have the guard down so that the blade is not exposed for you to accidentally contact with it. The third thing to keep in mind from a safety standpoint is the three inch rule that I described to you in the safety video. As you're passing a board through the saw, you want to keep your fingers three inches, at least three inches away from the blade. And not only where the blade is, but the path of the blade, for example, if I'm cutting this, this board by running it through this way, then my fingers are going to get closer and closer to the blade as I make the cut. And it's possible that if you hit a hard spot, the blade will slow down. And then when it hits a soft spot in the wood, the wood will all of a sudden push forward. And you don't want, you don't want your fingers to be in the way of the blade and get caught in the blade. So not only do you need to keep your fingers away this direction, you need to keep them away from the blade on either side of the blade so that as you push the wood through the blade, your fingers are completely out of the path of the blade. As I get ready to make a cut on this board, you'll see this board is not very wide. So as I'm back here, my hands are pretty far away from the blade. But as I continue to make this cut and push it through the blade, my hands at some point are going to get quite close to the, to the blade. And this isn't a very wide blade. So maintaining that three inch distance is, is going to become a challenge. So there's a couple of things you can do. One is, as the wood goes through, and there's less and less of the wood before the blade and more and more of the wood on the back side of the blade, you can actually reach behind the blade and pull the board through from this direction. It is, it is possible to do that on the bandsaw. That's not something you can do with most other saws like the table saw or the miter saw. But on, for a bandsaw, if you're behind the blade, it is perfectly safe to, to take that board and pull it through the cut the rest of the way. The second thing you can do is that you can use a push stick. And we have a number of these in, in the shop. These are just made from scrap wood. They're disposable. They're designed to get cut up and destroyed and used up and so forth in the process of making, making cuts. And much better one of these than your fingers. So the way this would work is, as I'm pushing the blade through, you'll notice on the, on the push stick here, there's a hook here on, the, on this end back tail end of the push stick. So I would hook that on the board and I can push it through this way, keeping my hands out of the way of the blade. Or on the bandsaw, I can lay it down sideways and hook it on the corner of the board and push the board through this way. And again, that's keeping my hand that much further away from the blade and that much safer. I really encourage you to use the push sticks when you're using the bandsaw or the table saw, which you'll learn about later. These push sticks really help make your work much safer. So with that introduction now, I'm ready to, uh, to just demonstrate the full process of the cut here. I've uh, got my machine set up. I've got uh, making sure nothing else is around that's gonna be in the way. I've got my fence set up to the distance I want. I have my push stick handy. So when I get towards the end of my cut, I can pick up the push stick and just, uh, and just continue the, the rest of the cut. So uh, the saw will make a fair amount of noise here. Bandsaws make some funny noises. They make some kind of creaks and groans sometimes as they, as they work, that's normal. But if you hear something really nasty, really rattly or scratching or, or scraping kind of sound, you want to speak up and let me know. That might mean something's wrong with the bandsaw that we need to take care of. So here we go. Thank you. 
grab my push stick. And now I can push it through the rest of the way. And I can put a hand on the back side and help guide the touch. There we go. We've made a nice safe cut on this board. As I mentioned earlier, a bandsaw can be used to make curved cuts as well. It's, it's one of the reasons that the bandsaw is one of the more versatile tools in the power woodworking shop. So what I wanna show you is on this piece of uh, ash wood here, uh, I've drawn this line here, this curved line, and I'll demonstrate for you how you would do a, a curved cut on the bandsaw. You'll be doing this as part of one of your, uh, your first projects uh, in, in the shop. I've drawn this in a nice dark marker here so that you can see it easily on the camera, but obviously you'd want a light pencil line uh, for, any, for any woodworking project that you're, that you're doing. So here we go. So there we go, we've made a curved cut uh, on this board here. I was uh, hurrying a little bit or rushing a little bit, so I didn't follow the line maybe quite as carefully as I could. It does take a little practice with the bandsaw to make nice, smooth, uh, accurate curved cuts. And that's part of what you'll be practicing on the tool tone project. A couple things I'll mention about making uh, curved cuts. You'll notice I moved my hands around while I was making the cut in order to get them in a good position. Generally, if your hands are further apart, you have finer control over the movement of, of the board and you will have to guide it through the cut as you make the cut. And sometimes you start out with both hands behind the blade and then as you make the cut, you can move a hand to the other side of the blade and continue the cut that way. So that's, uh, that's a little bit about making a, a curved cut on the bandsaw. The other thing to know about making curved cuts on the bandsaw is that the blade that is in the bandsaw can affect how sharp or how small a radius of turn you can cut. Bandsaw blades come in different widths. The, the blade for a particular saw is, has two really critical uh, uh, dimensions to it. One is the length of the blade, which has to match the path around the two wheels. But then the width of the blade, you can put different width blades on the same bandsaw. So here are two different blades that both fit this bandsaw. A wider blade is nice when you're making long straight cuts or cuts in heavy wood because that wide blade as you're making the cut helps stabilize the blade and helps keep the cut straight. And it's also a stronger blade if you're making a heavy cut. A thin blade is nice when you're trying to make a, uh, a cut with a lot of curves. And the thinner the blade, in the width of the blade in this direction, the thinner that blade is, then the sharper the turns you can make. So on this blade, we might be able to make only kind of gentle sweeping curves, whereas this blade, we might be able to make fairly tight turns with the bandsaw. One last note about the bandsaw. Bandsaws are notoriously bad at dust collection. The, the nature of the bandsaw with the open guides underneath and the, the big blade going around, they don't have a way of collecting their dust very well. And so this is one of the machines in the shop that we do not have dust collection hooked up to, it just, it just doesn't work well enough to make it worth the, with, worth the effort in our situation. So when you're done using the bandsaw, there may be sawdust sitting around that you need to, to clean up. We will accumulate sawdust, but don't be surprised if I ask you to help out by, by uh, vacuuming off the machine and sweeping up the dust that accumulates around the machine. The other thing is when using the bandsaw, often you're gonna generate a lot of scrap pieces the pieces that you're cutting free from the one you want. Make sure you clean up your own scraps, throw them in the scrap bin over here in order to uh, make the bandsaw a nice clean area for the next person to use it.